All right, let's look at another example of an interactive picture. And this, uh, this question, this time the user was looking to create uh, interactive scenarios, whereas you click each image or each character in this case, uh, one character will be the focal character and the other characters are blurred out, grayed out, silhouetted, or something like that. So we click one, click another, and we get the focus. And there could be a chat box or some other type of uh, additional elements here. But the idea is that only one character, one object is going to be selected at a time. And we can easily achieve this using Storylines button sets and selected states. So here's what this looks like. If I pull open my states, select my first character. So in the states panel, let's just add a new state and that'll be the selected state. So that's a built-in state. So I can start typing S E L and you can see how it uh, automatically populates for me, or we can just come in here and choose a selected state. So the selected state in this example is going to be the full color, right? The, the normal uh, image. We want the normal state to be um, grayed out or something like that. So in a format, Let's just choose recolor uh, or contrast, I guess, picture corrections. And if I turn the brightness all the way down, it should just make like a dark silhouette. And I could do different versions of that as well. If I turn the contrast down, right. There it is, like a light gray, something like that. So uh, let's just say minus 20 and 100. So that's good enough. Wait, that's not, I want more. I want lighter, lighter, fade it out. So do 50. So 50 is too much. There we go, 40 and a negative 100. So there's my normal state, my selected state, I click done. And if I click in here, I can see that works. Let's select the format painter and I'll paint him. You can see his selected state picks up the same properties and we'll do it finally for our third character where she has a normal state that's grayed out and then a selected state that's active. So the only other step here at this point for what we just showed was B2 add a button set. And the button set, well, let's just do, I'll preview it without the button set so you can take a look at it. But a button set is what's gonna give us that toggle effect, that, that ability to automatically show one character and hide another. So without the button set, each of these can be turned on just by repeatedly clicking each one. They're acting independently of each other. We want more of a radio button type effect where um, only one of these will be selected at a time. Now, for new users or users that have come from more of a programming background, first thing they reach for is storylines variables and set up a bunch of uh, triggers to make this happen. That works, but um, a lot of extra work. You don't even have to use a trigger for it. Here's how it works. Select each character or each object, in this case, a character, but you could it, text boxes, images, uh, shapes, anything, buttons. Select them all, right click, on them and choose button set. And we can just use the default name right here or we could create a new name ourselves, but uh, button set is fine and nothing changes. Everything looks the same, right? The same states are there that we just created. But this time when we preview the slide, only one object, Storyline is gonna listen for which object was clicked and ensure that only one of those can be clicked at a time. So pretty cool effect, right? 